Good morning, Cyber Traders. Happy Thursday on this August 2nd. Good to see you. Happy Thursday to you, Donna, Tom, Ken. Good to see you, John, everybody. Gene, Grant, good to see you, Deb. All right. Good, 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 good. Norma, good to see you, Gene. Well, guys, it looks great to be back. Um, I tell you, I just came back from Chicago. We're going to talk, regard, we'll talk about some of the great trades that have been going on, especially a lot of action going on this morning with this uh, ESIO, with uh, what Wayfair and Apron and all of them here. We're going to check them all out. But uh, came back from Chicago, and uh, let me tell you, what a what a clean, what a pretty city. I tell you, if you guys get an opportunity, great restaurants. I was there um, for all of you know. I was there for a trade station. They have their uh, they had their once a year event there, and I met a lot of new new traders. I don't be part of the team, and let me tell you, one thing I learned uh, being there. And I listen. I learn something new every day, you know, as a trader. And I tell you, this is one of the reasons why I love teaching. But there are a lot of people out there that are that I met that were traders that are doing a, a little bit of everything and. One thing they really appreciated more than ever, and more than un, uh, now understanding what day trading is all about, but they realized that they're doing too many things. There was one guy that was there he, uh, I was talking to, and um, he's still practicing on demo mode after six months. I'm like, I'm like, buddy, you gotta tr you gotta trade the one share theory of, of cyber trade university. Like, What's that? That just trade one share. Just trade one share. What do you have to lose? And uh, so I think I kind of uh, broke his uh, his streak of checking on because uh, I told him that the IRS is going to start auditing all the people that are making money on demo mode. I think that kind of worked. But uh, but writing about Chicago, yeah, John, it, it, you know it is uh, they do have terrible winters, but uh, let me tell you what a beautiful city. I mean, great restaurants. Highly recommend to go there. You know, I did. I took my family actually made a little vacation out of it. They uh, they loved it, but it was a, it was really cool, really nice. And yeah, you know what, Ron, we could sit there and talk about that all day, high taxes and this. I agree. I mean, listen, it's, you know, and, and, and I feel like, unfortunate, you know, fortunately, you know, it seems like these towns focus on these one law areas to make them look so pretty. And you're right. They probably don't take care of what's on the outside of the outside of their city and stuff. But when you come there, you're like, you, you, you guess you're kind of like brainwashed. You're like, I don't see the problem. You know, but anyway, great, great thing. But I want to tell you one little funny story. So I was there, and uh, and uh, the the staff of uh, of Trade Station came up to me and said, "Hey, Fausto, um, I love the the little tweet that you um, about the hundred dollar milkshake." And I'm looking at him, and he just totally threw me off guard. Um, actually, you know, Ken was actually uh, asking me about it this morning. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, how'd you know about the hundred dollar ice cream? He's like, I like, I can't believe it. I never heard such a thing. And uh, and then he said the same thing to you. And we looked into it. He goes, why don't you buy the thousand dollar ice cream? And I'm like, <laughs> well, let me let me let me hit let me hit pretty big on a couple of stocks, and maybe I will buy the thousand dollar ice cream. But uh, they were really impressed about the hundred dollar ice cream at uh, a serendipity that I took. So that was pretty cool. But listen, I was telling everybody in in the, in the room because it kind of came up. And it kind of went a little viral inside the room. And I said, listen, this is what you this is what you train for. This is what you work for. You know, it's okay to spoil yourself once in a while. You know, and uh, you always, and, and you know what? That will always be something that you will remember for the rest of your life. You know, it's not like you go in there every day, you know, every week or every year. Go out there and spoil yourself. Buy a $100 milkshake at Serendipity. You know, I enjoyed it. It was with the family. And, uh, you know, everybody around me also appreciated it too. So it was pretty cool. Now, um, but it was just pretty funny how they all knew about it, so I just want to share that with you. All right, so anyway, let's get right into see what's going on this morning because there are a couple of things that are making some big moves. Um, listen, after watching what was happening yesterday regarding about some of the market movement, it's been really, really slow. It's summertime. We're in the, we're in the thick of things. I'll tell you, I just stepped out of my house uh, early this morning, and it, it has to be, I feel like I'm in, in Florida. I feel bad for some of you, but... It is humid here in New York. It is hot. And, uh, you know, was it Thursday? Hell, you might see a lot of people going to be leaving for this weekend because it was kind of lousy here at the beginning of the week here in New York with rain and stuff. So, you know, I think it could probably be a little bit more. It, it, we're going to have some really good action early. And then uh, it, it could get pretty slow. But remember, 
I did tell you that last time, but I said Friday is always good because a lot of the assistants leave, and we had a great Friday about, was it last week? But anyway, a couple of good stocks that did move yesterday, um, even though the feds didn't make any big move. You had Pandora. I know some of you guys did really well on that one. You could see it had a nice little dead cap bounce where it went from 850 down to 650. had a little bit of a nice little bounce right there. That one did pretty well. So that one, uh, that was pretty good. Uh, the the, uh, the GD, the GDS also, I heard you had a great pre-market in that one too. That one got crushed down to 75, down to 20. And you know, there's another thing I do want to point out regarding about a lot of people asking me about day trading, how to swing trade. I told them, I said, listen, you want to be a good options trader. You want to be a good swing trader. You damn well better know how to day trade because that's what trickles down into a swing trade. And you can see just like this one, if you didn't see that stock coming, boom, you blew up your account and lost, you got a, uh, you got a haircut and lost half of it with a blink of an eye. Now, what's going on this morning, guys? There's a lot of good stocks moving on. So everybody get their pen and paper ready. Want to write these things down. And remember, um, not all of these are going to make big moves, but some of them will. So let's keep an eye on it. QTRH. Here's a stock that uh, it's got up 41%, up 168% already. Some of you guys already saw it earlier this morning. It kind of gapped up a lot from yesterday, so we're not really getting that really good volatility in this pre-market. But she's got a little bit of a decent spread. Don't really know too much about it because I, I think we never, we never traded this stock before. But you know what? She's up a little bit nicely here. She looks like she's testing some resistance levels uh, right around the April time frame. So if it does break it, you plus got big support levels back in the, you know, all the way to the beginning of the year. But if she does break it, you could probably see another, another good 10, 20 cents. And also follow yesterday's previous resistance levels. One thing that looks very exciting about it, look at the iceberg orders. You got 10,000 shares, 10,000, 3,000. You don't see any of that on the offer. So that one looks like it's pretty good. Next one on the list, DXCM. All right, so that one, great, great um, after hours trading. Looks like obviously it must have been an earnings announcement. Boom, stock looks really, really strong. Problem is, do you guys want to risk $117? I mean, that was a nice little move, but you got to be a level five stock to trade this one. But I'm throwing it out there just kind of show you, you know, here's a stock of 23%, you know, but we all see, we always trade a lot of 23% stocks like we just saw earlier. You don't have to risk $117 to do that. ES. I O, oh, okay, that was the big one that we're talking all about this morning. That one, another one, big, big gap up. A lot of earnings announcements coming out, guys, today. A lot of, I mean, even what happened yesterday. So a lot of earnings. Uh, here's another one, gapped up pretty nicely, up 18%. Looks like she's testing the resistance levels right around here. Um, you can see we're testing these resistance levels. It does break it. You know, then you can see stock gap up pretty high. But ESIO, that one looks pretty interesting. We'll keep an eye on that one. R R G B. All right, so this stock got decimated, got really crushed. Red Robin. Uh, I, I'll be honest, I never ate that before, so I really can't talk too bad about it. I don't know why it got crushed, but you know, obviously earnings were not good. Got got destroyed right there, down ten points. Stock has got making a little bit of a comeback. The good thing about this one right here is we all know that pharmaceutical stocks don't come back uh, when they get crushed, but these they do come back. I love bottom fishing, so. I'm not talking about just a summer flounder. I'm talking about even trading the stock. So this one looks like it probably make a little bit of a comeback. Uh, use yesterday's resistance levels to kind of justify your resistance. Looks like it's right around 38. So about two bucks away. But remember, this is a probably a four stock, a level th two or a, a three or four. IHT, another one. This one up 71%. You guys remember we trade this stock. Uh, not too long ago, this one from a buck sixty to three sixty. Looks like she's playing it again, up seventy five percent. Quarter million shares already traded. Look at that spread. Look at the look at the iceberg orders. Five thousand fifty seven hundred at two sixteen. Four thousand at two forty. So it looks like we got some action here. This one looks pretty look, lot, hell of a lot more cheaper and controllable. Okay, some of you also bring up. I know uh, Ben brought this one up. Uh, Wayfair W had a nice little pop right here. Stock got took a little big hit, making a little bit of a comeback. Just remember, you got to be a five trader, level five. If you're not the guy here that's making that can afford to lose a thousand a day, do not trade this stock. Okay, Ferrari, what the hell happened, dude? We got crushed on this one on my swing trade, and it happens. You know what I mean? And uh, but it looks like it's making a little bit of a comeback. 
want to keep an eye on it. We're at major, major support levels, so I'm not selling it here. But if it does break here, uh, I'm basically where I own it at, you know. So I held it for three months, had a nice little rally. Now, you know, I gave a lot of my profit away on the swing trade on this one. But, uh, but I'm going to hold it here. I'm not going to sell it to major support. If it does break the support levels, I'm out because it's going to go down to 105. All right, so I'm going to keep a very close eye on building some good support levels on this one. Apron is also moving pretty well. Apron, keep a close eye on it because Apron is going to be, looks like it, it, it's going to be testing the support levels back in April. So um, you, let's keep an eye on that major support levels. We've done really well with Apron. Apron, you could trade this stock. 23,000 share iceberg order out there on the matrix at 210. A little telltale window right there. So let's keep an eye. There he is on level two. You could see him right there. So let's see what happens on that last, uh, that last, uh, that major support levels. And last but not least, could, what a, what the hell's going on with here, huh? We did really well with H E A R. We traded that stock. It was literally what 40 cents uh, back in what three months ago. Look where it is, 28. I would have to say this stock right here has to be one of the the biggest surprises that I've seen in years. I'm talking like maybe 10, 15 years. I see, we see stocks go this high all the time. I never seen a stock hold stability this long because obviously earnings came out. They did what they did. I knew they blew out of earnings, uh, but this stock, my God, very, very strong stock. Holy cow, did it, not, it did not come back down. I mean, when's the last time you saw a 40 cent stock go and stay at the $20 price range, you know, for, for months? So really, congratulations, great great company. Yep, yeah, um, headphones, it is, it's at, uh, they make those headphones, uh, gaming headphones. I think they just signed a contract, they said. Something like that with uh, eSports or something like that. So anyway, uh, as a swing trade, I mean, it, it looks pretty strong. I mean, that's pretty damn big revenues uh, for here, you know, to take this big of a leap. You know, we know we always get nervous when we have stocks go up this high, but she's pretty strong. I, I, I probably just more just day trade it more than swing trading it. All right, anything I'm missing I did not call out? The TEVA, you know, we trade that stock so many times, TEVA. You know, a um, lot of volume, a little bit more of a brand name stock, pharmaceutical stock. You got to be a little bit more advanced to trade this one. You got to be really careful on this one, Vince, all right? So what do we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stocks. That is a lot for a August 2nd, you know, uh, but it is hump day because it is Thursday. Anything else I'm missing, guys, I did not call out? Anything else? All right, so those are our watch list, guys. So um, listen, just to let everybody know, I repeat this all the time, not all these stocks are going to move. Two or three of them might make their pop. Some of you already traded pre-market, already in them. So if you're doing well, hold on to them. You don't want to trade going into the first five minutes, uh, you know, five, 15 minutes into the open. So now you're going to have to wait for the first five minutes of the open. And if we see something, we'll, we'll put it out there. Remember, there's always new ones that come out from... from uh, from uh, left field. Yes, I will post these picks, Kurt, uh, once, once the meeting's over, all right? All right, everybody, good luck today, and uh, listen, happy trading, and we'll see you uh, for the afternoon meeting, all right? Good luck, everyone.